Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4 ACK here at Hamcation 2024, and I'm with Tar Heel Designs this morning. Let's hear a little bit about Tar Heel Designs and how this came about. Stick around and we'll get right to it. My name's Robert Young, NC4 uh, I started Tar Heel Antennas in 2000. Uh, I founded that co uh, company and uh, I built and designed all the antennas and mounts for them up until 2008 okay and a little something come up and we won't get into that but anyway i sold them the company and um i started helping them right after that and i helped them up to uh january of 2023 about 12 years i've done the customer service design you know any of the technical the military design side of it and in january of 2023 it was just time for me to move on and start a few more projects and that's what got Tar Heel, uh, Tar Heel Design started. Tar Heel Designs is my original company that actually goes back to 98. Tar Heel Antennas was a spinoff of that company. Okay. And then I sold that spinoff to, to Galen and Gene out in Missouri. And they've done a good job. I hope they keep uh, doing a good job. And when their time and when their time comes to retire, maybe they'll sell me that bag, and we'll just put it all <laughs> together and stop the confusion. But anyway, for now, Star Hill Designs, uh, we've brought out our mobile HF antennas, uh, some matching networks for those, and what I've really focused on is um, the dipoles for HOAs. HOAs has been a big issue the last 15 years; it has really shown up. And I'm trying to build a good resonant, where you can have a resonant antenna. Uh, shortened resonant antenna that helps eliminate a lot of common mode and tuning issues where guys in HOA situations can have a, a decent station and not a lot of interference. Okay. So that's what we've done. Uh, and like I said, I still do the mobile antennas. We, we can take those mobile antennas and make ground mounted antennas out of those. And of course our dipoles for in the attics, different sizes, that's working out well. Okay. Some HOAs are so strict that you can't even do anything outside. So the attic is working out good if your attic is wood and regular shingles. But uh, that's where we're at right now. And I brought out a little portable antenna. We'll go take a picture of that in a minute. Okay. But I've got a little portable antenna because some of the parks on the air guys has been wanting something a little different and, and even uh, motorized parked on air antennas. Uh, so we're getting into that too. So it got a lot going on. Okay, um, outstanding. Yeah, I can see maybe this one fitting in my attic. Yeah. I don't think this one's gonna well, fit Well, this my is attic. what you really need in the attic, the large one. That's, actually, this is our most popular, this large one right here in the attic. Really? It's 10 through 80. Uh, we got controllers for, they, for these. Uh, and their legal limit, which I don't think I'd run legal limit in the attic, but anyway, right. they are capable of that. And these are heavy enough, built heavy enough, where actually most of the large antennas, and what I'm fixing to tell you, not a lot of people know about, but we're putting long elements on them, and they're putting them way up on their towers for 30, 40, 80, and 160. Oh, wow. So that's working out great for secondary antennas, for guys that's got tall towers. And uh, for guys that don't have a good low band receive antenna, that comes in real handy right here. So that's gonna be another market this is gonna fall into, hopefully. That's the plan anyhow. <laughs> nice. So Robert, let's take a quick look at your mobile antenna. Okay. I've been running one on the back of my Jeep for quite a number of years okay. now. I wanna see some of the new offerings. Okay. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll work. take a look at that. That'll work. So it looks like you've got a whole line of mobile antennas. I know this is very similar to the size mm -hmm. I run on the Wrangler. Uh, if I put one of these big guys on there, the Wrangler might uh, lift off the ground. That's a what you bit. want. What you want is a, <laughs> on HF Mobile, you want an antenna that cuts at least two miles a gallon of, your, of your gas mileage. Then you know you got a good HF Mobile. I, I, I can see that. <laughs> but with anyway, some of these. we have the small antennas. Not a lot of, not much difference what I used to build. What I'm doing now is I did change the coil material to a G10 FR. Uh, fiberglass. Okay. But, so the coil material is fantastic compared to what it used to be uh, instead of just regular phenolic. Uh, we're using roller thrust burns now instead of brass sleeve burns. That's not nothing, that's really nothing to get excited about, but it sounds good. Uh, the motor is a, a lot different. This motor, instead of a two minute travel time, is a one minute travel time, and we got quad sensors in it. Instead of zero to 250 count, now you're getting zero to a thousand count. So when you're using controllers of some sort, no matter who builds them, 
you're doubling or tripling up your sensitivity. It okay. makes it nice. And all of our antennas have that now. They're all okay. faster and they all have quad counters in them. One of the best things I've ever done, actually, because of all the controllers on the market. I, in the beginning, I never thought controllers was going to take off like they did. Right. I'm old school, use the up and down switch, <laughs> but I'm finding out and, and old school don't pass these days. you got to have controllers. Believe it or not, <clears throat> I still use a rocker switch yeah. and a Wrangler because that, that's just what yeah, I got in the school, beginning. Yeah, and you're old school. Old school. But if you ever <laughs> start so. using the, or the controllers, you'll never go back to the up and down switch. And I also have a large antenna. We didn't you know, have a large antenna and but this imaginary antenna you see right here Florida Bob come picked it up this morning I promised him he could have the I have my display but it's a three and a half inch coil antenna for the guys that want massive antennas and I'm sorry I couldn't show it to you 30 minutes ago I could have shown it to you but uh, he, I'm a little late this morning uh, yeah so I told him uh, I told him he could take it on home but it's a three and a half inch coil basically the reason we have different models and they're basically the same except you got a two foot, a three foot, and a four foot. And that just depends on where you mount it on the vehicle. We got it, we got an you know, antenna that'll work in your application. And then we have, of course, like I say, the large three and a half inch antenna. Nice. <clears throat> And if you would, I want to take one more second, and yep. I want to take a look at this POTA antenna that you have. Okay, and I, I would like to show you the, oh, the matching stuff. This is this is stuff that's been on the market. This is uh, I've done this kind of stuff for years. I just never really advertised it. This is just matching next work that go at the base of the antenna. Okay. Uh, for guys that's running amplifiers on large antennas, you have to have a perfect standing wave, and this allows you to switch in perfect matching. My little matching bugs that I've made for years. Just only a handful of people know about them, and they're great for switching in for impedance matching to get a perfect standard wave everywhere you go. You don't need any of this unless you're running an amplifier. Okay. And then we had the original little variable perfect match. It's just a small motorized induction coil. All that is. Oh, that was very popular back in the day, and we just brought that back. So if I'm just running 100 watts, I you don't, don't need none. I don't need none of that. Need but if I'm gonna run thousand watts if you run in 500 thousand watt mobile which is rare nowadays you got to make sure every band matches perfect exactly. and one matching coil you know now you just take one magic coil and kind of balance it out uh, but with the amplifier it's got to be perfect okay and uh, so that's what that's for so you can make it perfect on every band and also for guys that like to play antenna like me right you and you know, I have a kit to where you can just have the whole set <laughs> and just play around, you know, uh, learning and matching, playing with different antennas. Nice. Okay. All right, so tell me a little bit about this POTA setup that you got here. Okay, I have a, a lot of quests to do. The parks on air is fantastic. I mean, that, that has uh, really blossomed, and I figured I need to make a little something for that. I wanted to make a heavy-duty stand. A lot of little tripods are lightweight, and I wanted to make something that would hold any antenna I build, any mobile antenna that I build will work on this. Okay. Uh, so if you wanted just to use the tripod with our little radial setup, you can, uh, even the motorized antenna, you can set it right on here. But what I've got here is a manual tune. Uh, it's, it's like the, 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 the little small antenna, and it's just manual tune. Oh, okay. You can just manually adjust it, no motor, makes it real simple. And I've got enough tension on the inside. I got a tensioner on the inside to where you don't need to set tighten any wing nuts or anything. You can put any whip combination you want on it, from short to those telescope, you know, the 17 foot, foot telescope. Right. It will hold any of them in place while you tune. You don't nice. have to. You don't have to adjust, turn, test, touch. You know, you can you can just move it once you learn where it needs to go, of course, then you, you, you've got through that learning curve. And like I said, this is a, the same antennas, it's just no motor and drive. Where this also comes in is you don't have to bag it up when you're done using it. You can take it off of this tripod. If you got a simple mount on your, mo on your mobile, you can put it right on your mobile mount, manually tune it, and now you got your mobile rig, just not motorized, now you got your mobile HF and an antenna that'll run hundreds of thousands of miles down the road. It's built that heavy. And, and this is going to hold up, not adjust on me, as I'm going down the road. That's right. I mean, wow, that's and, impressive. And then now, if you now I do have a backup on it. If you are driving on North Carolina roads, I don't know if you've been there lately, <laughs> but yes, we do have a thumb screw on the back just in case you need to. So we can so use it. So you can optionally. lock it if okay. you if you want to. 
and uh, and then everything's on thumb screws and I even include a few extra thumb screws so if you lose one you got some backups everything comes apart real easy I, I bring the uh, RF ground down to the base nice good tubing powder coated a thumb screws here of course this includes a basic radio set this is a minimum radio system I recommend more Okay. You know, but you know, you do the best you can there. Right. And like I say, any of our antennas will work on this. Uh, if, if and even the motorized, if you wanted a motorized setup while you're set up portable, you could do that too. So there's a lot of combinations here. And this is—is is this a mill whip or this is running? actually a mill whip? Uh, I was lucky enough to run across uh, an old army guy that had these in his in his shed. This new old stock, of course, these is Vietnam era. Right. These are new old stock. They're like new. I got several hundred of them. I'm not going to sell them separate to anybody. They're going to come with the antennas till I run out. Okay. And now, out of curiosity, because this is a, a pretty neat looking setup. Yeah. What's this going to run me to pick one of these up? Everything you see right here, the tripod, the radials, the antenna, just like you see it, this is high powered version, 800 watts. Okay. The whip and everything, 469. That's not bad. That's the whole setup. Now, do you also offer a lower power version, or is this the only one well, you can Well, you can offer? get any of the antennas on here, and, I, and I've and i made all the mobiles uh, manual over time also. A lot of guys have always bought the manual versions. Mm -hmm. I just never really advertised them. I, it was just, we just called them custom antennas. I can still custom make you anything you want. Outstanding. And uh, you can get any of our antennas with, without a motor. So, okay. I mean, but you can do any combination. We can figure it, figure out what you need. Er, you know, everything, just whatever you want, we can make it work out. Well, man, I greatly appreciate yeah, your time man. this morning. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3. <laughs> That's it. You going to interrupt this interview all day long? <laughs> Love you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, I want to